Every once in a while, I like to create some content, whether it's a blog or a podcast about health and fitness in a way that is personal and relates to the average person. And I try to do that the best that I can, such as uh, a couple weeks ago, I wrote a blog called The Leg Workout. And in that blog, I, I wrote workouts that the average person could be doing depending on their goals, what they're trying to do. Are you just trying to lose weight? Are you trying to get stronger? Along with some uh, example workouts and why I chose this specific set and rep scheme with this amount of rest and why I, I think it's important. Uh, a lot of people disregard leg workouts that I've seen. A lot of people I know, they, they, they're afraid of them or they try to avoid it because of the, the pain that comes from doing it. You know, if you have a good leg workout, You've just altered your ability to walk and sit, possibly for the next week, depending on how often you work out legs in the first place and what muscles you worked out, whether it's your calves, your hamstrings, your quads, your buttocks, you know, your gluteus maximus, uh, hip flexors, any of those muscles, if they're in pain and, and sore for any amount of time, that can alter the way you do everything. Uh, so I did a work, I did a blog about that a couple weeks ago on goliflava.com. Sometime last year, I wrote a blog called My Outlet, which was about health and fitness and how it helps me and my ability to keep my mind on track with a lot of other things. Because with exercise, I have something that I can look at being my workout plan. I can look at it at any given time and see the progress I've made. Sometimes I can't see it, all of that in, in the mirror. Now, there have been times where someone tell me, hey, you seem to have gained muscle here or you seem to have gotten faster on on this sport, stronger here, etc. You know, stuff like that. Sometimes I'm not going to see that because I'm too focused on the progression or because I'm I'm working on it all the time. Uh, that was last year that I wrote that. And in 2016, I wrote something about excuses. And the excuses that a lot of people make. I don't have time. I don't know what to do, etc. And a couple of those things I'll be talking about in this this short bit. Um, the biggest one related to what I'll be talking about is a blog post I wrote in July 2015 called my my fat loss thoughts or how I would help you lose fat. It was a list of seven things of uh, exercise, eat, relax, sleep, get support, set goals, and be realistic. Fun fact about this is I tried to put an ad on Facebook about this and because of the word fat, it was considered degrading in a way. And Facebook said we're not we're not gonna push this out to potential viewers because that's considered demeaning, which I get. Uh, it's, there's a, I, my, my opinion is that if, if it's, if it is fat, then it's, you know, it's, if that's what it's called. It's a technical term. It's, you know, that, but the overweight or obese, there are other ways that I could have put it. Uh, so I, I get that. Uh, weight management is, seems to be the, the best term that I came up with at this point to, to not come off as an elitist or arrogant, because that's not the purpose of me creating this content. I don't think I'm any better than anyone. Everyone has, has health conditions and things they dealt with in the past and that they are dealing with that affect their function and health and fitness, those things. So what I wanted to do was create a presentation or a slideshow that kind of, again, same goal as a lot of the other stuff, make a lot of the information that I think would be helpful for people trying to improve their health and fitness, trying to create a easier to digest format for the information for at least people who are interested in new information, something for a debate, trying to find something to challenge, something to create a discussion because there is a lot of information. Of course, you can Google anything. That doesn't mean you're going to come across the right information first or at the right time. Some lessons are better learned, of course, from other people's mistakes. So there's probably many things on my blogs and my YouTube videos of me exercising or in my podcast, something I've said or done that 
a physical therapist that I know or a fitness trainer that I know could look at and say, okay, that was wrong. This is the right way in accordance with this resource, this study, this certification that he or she has, this experience, etc. Along with that, I want to make it perfectly clear. A lot of this is opinion. This is opinion. And this is from experience, my experience. I don't have any professional training. All I have is the many years that I've been in the gym, that I've been reading about it, researching and trying to practice and asking people questions about myself. Some of these references that I'll be putting in the links, the description may be out of date. If they are or they're wrong, please send me a message, email me, send me a tweet saying, uh, that's not right. This is the right information. Please fact check everything I say. I'm not a professional in any way, shape or form. Kind of like you, when you buy a supplement and it says it's not approved by the FDA, et cetera, et cetera. No, it doesn't always mean anything, but at the same time, it should still be a reason for you to not take something simply as fact, fact check it, fact check it against people who you know and trust regarding their knowledge in this industry. So for the a couple minutes in, and I had and I wanted to put this in as soon as possible. The too long didn't read section, you know, the T O D R section. The six things that I say you should be doing, six things I say you shouldn't be doing. Uh, the six things you should be doing that I would say six things to do would be eat smaller meals more often, drink more water, exercise three to five days, uh, three to five times weekly, make it fun for you. Get the same optimal sleep nightly and have more than one stress outlet. I'll go into all of them deeper in a minute, but and going into the six things not to do that I'd say are track progress only by scale or comparisons. Make excuses for missing a workout, which I talked about uh, just just a minute ago. Depend on supplements alone. Rely on trending gear. You know, your products, stuff like that. Exercise too often, too early, and rush the process. So if you don't want to hear anything else I have to say, that's your bit right there. Okay? So going back to the things I'd say you should be doing. The first two I stated were eat smaller meals more often and drink more water. That's the nutrition part. In regards to this eating smaller meals more often, one of the big things is that includes breakfast. Some people wake up and, you know, they don't eat anything until lunchtime. So about five hours into the day, they haven't eaten anything. And don't keep, and let's not forget, when you're asleep, those hours still matter. You're fasting. So if, if you're getting great sleep, that six to eight hours every night, well, that's six to eight hours, you're not eating. Your body is stagnant. And once you get up, you don't eat anything for another five hours. That's half the day. You haven't eaten anything. You didn't put anything in your body. There's that thing of cannibalism. You know, your body starts eating away at itself to try to keep itself going. Had to get some type of energy. So that could be eating away at any muscle mass that you do have. And then the next th- next thing you do eat, your body could be starved and storing that as fat. And I'm, I'm going to make a point of this at this point right time to be very clear research (laughs) just about everything i'm saying don't take much anything i'm saying is fact matter of fact the moment i finish this i will be sending this off to professionals that i know in the health and fitness industry to get their feedback so don't be surprised if you see a blog later on maybe in a couple months or so and uh, some pasting of other professionals feedback on this so going with that, uh, the eating two big meals a day, you know, your body gets to that starvation point. And it's just, okay, well, I'm not going to eat again till another five hours. So I'm going to make the most out of, I'm going to store all of this as fat, all this energy, everything that just entered the body. It's not going to be stored as fat, which of course isn't going to help you in the long run in regards to talking about health goals, uh, healthier options. That's, that's where you got to be really re- Got to reflect a lot on your habits. If you're always on the go, you know, pay attention to how much you you buy fast food. Some of this you can do easier nowadays because you got the banks 
have these online have the online sites where you can type in fast food and see right there how many times that you bought Burger King and McDonald's in the last week, months, etc. And you can at the same time see a pie chart showing how much you've spent, how much of your monthly budget goes toward junk food, stuff like that. You know, so the simple options, of course, you know, the salads versus a burger. So what do you put on the salad? Of course, then becomes the next thing because salads seem really boring. And many times people negate the healthy aspect of salads by dumping a bunch of dressing on it. You know, so that whatever empty calories that you would have negated from the junk from that burger, you're almost replacing a good bit of that with like, your ranch dressing, Thousand Island, uh, etc. Instead of finding some decent oil and vinegar or some other options to put in there. Another one is nuts versus candy. I like trail mix. And I like chocolate. <laughs> Trying to find a healthy medium. You know, instead of buying maybe some Twizzlers, see about maybe buying some Chex Mix is the best. It's the most popular brand I can think of that makes them. But there are plenty of store-bought brands and other brands that I'm not going to be able to remember off the top of my head where they serve plain nuts and almonds or, you know, trail mix, which, you know, had some seals with GMA, GMA, GMO. Oh, sorry without GMOs or showing uh, healthy for your heart, et cetera. And there's plenty of SEALs certifications for stuff like that. Number one is what you're drinking. And before I go into water, there is the, you know, you drink some soda. Okay, well, what about trying to separate that for something different like coconut water? No, that's, that's an acquired taste, but it can be helpful. That's, that's something else that can help. There's plenty of options, of course, to go into that. Uh, that kind of goes into when I said drink more water. Many people don't like water plain, which I get. <laughs> it's a thing. It was surprising when I first realized that. But there are, I've met many people, especially when I was younger, they say, I don't like water. It's plain. There's no taste to it. Okay. All right. So there's, there's options. You know, you can add lemon or lime or apple cider vinegar along with honey. Uh, that apple cider vinegar and honey part kind of go together. It's supposed to be a good thing for the heart. It's one of those herbal options, so to speak. The lemon and lime thing, you know, of course, you can always buy actual fruit. And then there's also the, the juices that you can buy. You can squeeze a dab inside of your water for the taste or the quality. For the tap water, you know, there's the Brita's, the, pu the Pures that are supposed to filter out a lot of that stuff. I personally haven't done a lot of research into which are better and for what, how well they actually are. Uh, if you have it, please share it. But that's one of those buffers between what could be in the water and that can actually affect taste as well. For those that find it difficult to force themselves to drink water, you can always carry a water bottle. Some people get weird looks, but it's sometimes that's what helps people to have that water bottle with them, to have that thermos or that camelback service from the time in the military. That was that was a that was a thing that many times was just the best way of doing it. Having a camelback or, you know, if you got your rucksack or you're in a salt pack, you just keep a thermos in there to keep it keep it cold and keep that uh those BPAs from the plastic out. Assuming that's still a, a big issue. It was the last time I read into that. And to try to find a healthy medium between a lot of that you can buy a bottle with a filter. Those are those are pretty cool. I think thermos actually actually sell some of those for about 15, 20 bucks, different colors. And, you know, they don't look too spazzy and they, they do their job from, they state that they do that job pretty decently. I, I don't know. I don't know the research on that. It, it could be around the lines of uh, the straw that filters when you, you know, you're trying to drink from a river stream. I don't know the quality of that. I'm not going to make assumptions here. So going on into the exercising. Uh, exercise 35 times weekly, make it fun for you. Going into the exercise, how often you do it. These two really go together. Kind of really mesh. Um, finding ways to do it so many times in a week. It's, there's options. There's, you know, there's sports, there's cycling. So you don't really have to go to a gym just to, you know, deal with heavy weights. So for some reason, 
you know, you're, you're not really worrying about bulking up for some reason, uh, or for some reason you you don't have the confidence or the comfort to be using using machines or free weights, etc. You can go there, get on the bike, get on the treadmill, or the stairmaster. There are cardio options that still counts. You got to do something for your heart, regardless of how much you uh, you're pumping iron. And swimming is a great workout, especially if you have um, injuries regarding joints. It can be it's considered to be a good way of getting a good workout without the pounding on the joints. Yoga is a workout. Holding a stance and working your core that that is a thing. The easiest example would be a plank. Someone you can look at a plank and say, "Well, that's not too big a deal." Well, if you do it right, and then you advance to the part where to a point where you're you're taking your left arm and your right leg off the ground or the floor and you're still trying to balance for an extended amount of time or you're doing hollow body holds, similar moves like that. That takes that, that, that takes some energy. That's, that's not just something you can just do. It's a lot different than simply laying on the floor and doing crunches or sit ups. It's not exactly the same because there's a lot of wiggle wiggle room that you're looking to avoid. And you'll know that once you start doing some of those holds and you can't, you know, you're doing this all the shaking. It's your body trying to you know, stabilize the muscles, trying to keep you in the same position going, what is this? This is new. Now, walking. I've known, I've done a few people who would do a lot of walking and say, this is, I've been told this is great exercise. And I'm not, like, as I've said many times already, I am not one to say that it's not, but the few people who have told me that. They were told walking was a great exercise for them. They were past the point where walking was the best thing for them. From as far as I knew, they had, they were at a point where they could be, you know, they're doing the cycling and the running and some free weights as well. Maybe just, you could count the hit the hit training, the high in, high intensity interval training in that, you know, the sprints at somewhat maximum level. That's, that w- that was an option for them. The walking was kind of a kind of a something they were they had already surpassed from a little bit I had, I had known about them. And plenty of those things I just listed go into how you make it fun for you. Some people do not like going to a gym and lifting weights. And they consider it unnecessary, uh, a waste of time, not fun. And in many situations, for some people, it's just not a part of functional training. It's it just doesn't. They don't see the carryover into that. Some people would rather do something like mountain climbing or rucking, which makes sense, you know, pushing vehicles or pulling vehicles. You know, it's a strongman type training. Well, let's pick up some, instead of walking around the gym with heavy dumbbells, why not this this water, this water log, uh, this, you know, some logs or you know, water bottles, something that's a little more unstable. And a little more realistic to real world environments, depending on the person, you know, want to be a better, a better farmer, you know, that the farmer's walk sells kind of a cheap example, but, you know, walking with heavy dumbbells, heavy something in your hand or one at a time, things like that. You know, if you want to be a better basketball player, well, yeah, at some point you may want to work on your ability to move from the af- of athletic stance to be able to stop on the dime and be able to jump and you know, things like that. Um, uh, you want to get stronger in a certain exercise, find ways to strengthen those muscles. That list goes on and on. Finding what are you looking to do? Are you looking to, to, to lose that lose that weight to get fit into a certain dress? Or are you looking to get back to a certain point? Of course, these are realistic goals depending on what what's happened, what you're dealing with. You that's, That can be different from everyone. Not everyone's going to do the exact same workout and get the same results. And many times that's just not going to be... It's just not going to be fun for you if you didn't want if you're looking to get faster and instead you're getting bulkier and slower. Well, yeah, that's probably not going to make you too happy in a way or shape form. Uh, finding your motivation. Those go into that. Do you want to get better at something? Do you want to be able to do certain things better? Or are you just looking to be able to keep up with your kids? Do, do you want to be able to do something better, feel better about a certain way? Those those options go in there. Group workouts, that can be something that helps some people. It's one of those things where that can help mitigate that confidence factor, that comfort factor. You don't, know, you don't feel like you know what you're doing. You can look in the mirror or look beside you 
see somebody else doing it right and if they're sucking or they're okay then you can you can gauge okay well if this person is dealing with this this way that's where i can look to get to that point or i I can get to that point or i'm okay you know this you got some got some more comfort there someone you can ask if you're not sure about something and competing with others some people get motivation by going to the gym or doing something with someone in a way where they can compare directly and compete directly with someone you want to be able to see who can you know, lift the most weight in a certain exercise of course the bench press is usually the most popular indicator of strength so to say it doesn't mean anything um in a lot of real world i should stop there it doesn't mean too much in a lot of real world applications but that is an exercise that the average person the average guy normally starts doing first people people are more likely to ask me how much i can bench before they're going to ask how much i can deadlift or how many pull-ups i can do or how long can i hold a plank i've rarely been asked any of those before so and rest trying to get a rest can be a difficult one that indirectly affects everything everything your energy how much you're able to put out in the in a workout how much you're getting from the workout it, it affects has an umbrella effect on a lot of things trying to get the same night the same sleep nightly can be so difficult for a lot of reasons depending on what shift you work the type of lifestyle you have the type of job you have and you get kids family obligations so so many things that go into that uh, travel especially across different time zones but the goals some of the goals are usually to try to keep something try to keep some type of schedule try to keep that same amount of sleep that works for you because it helps improve scheduling of everything else and it helps you to be 100 percent daily I've, I've done that a few times and realized that a good while ago good quite a few years ago during workouts if i don't get good sleep and i go into a workout many times i'll get a I end up putting a lot more effort into the workout, trying to get barely the same, barely as much results or hitting the same numbers as I did last time. And usually I can look to, to make about a five to 10 pound increase or two to three reps increase from workout to workout, especially in strength workouts. And many times that won't always be the case, especially if, you know, in a case where I didn't get much sleep last night, only two or three hours for whatever reason. And, and again, with the getting the same amount of sleep nightly can also help with the life hack, as they call it, of doing, being able to do difficult tasks earlier in the day. You know, anything that's, that you consider difficult to do or to consider to need the most energy. For me, I, I put the gym in there just because that's not something I want to do at the end of the day. I don't want to go to the gym, work out, or play ball, to go home, shower, and then end up going right to bed. That, that That's not going to help me sleep too well, me personally. If that's that's for you, then I'm going on. I'm moving on. I'm trying to relax. How do you relax before bed? You know, something to help you wind down. You, you know, read a book. Stay away from the computers and electronic screens if you can. In most cases, that's not really a thing. But, you know, you try get away from the light try to calm yourself down and going and going back to the electronics thing there are apps that help with that and they help dim the screen in a way where it pulls certain colors from the screen so it's more of a warmer look uh, i think i think it's decreasing the blue light from the screen so it's more of a reddish tint i think i'm saying that right the two apps i found that were great for that were flux or flux and redshift i think i found flux about about four about four years ago can't remember where i found out about it from i want to say i want to say i found out about it i found out about it from a pod nuts episode a good while ago pod nuts they make their, their podcasting they do podcasts about it and linux and uh and the like F flux is it was mostly Windows, and it had a nice GUI, and had a nice little program app to it. And because of that, because they were mostly Windows, at a certain point, Redshift was you know, was a open source program created for Linux, where you could do the same thing. It, it pretty much takes your your time zone 
from your 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 time zone on your your network configuration on your computer and from there it, it configures when to pull the, the colors from the screen so about whenever it starts getting dark and, and it includes the daylight saving times all that in there once it starts getting dark the program will pull some of that that those bright colors away from your screen in a way that it's not the same as dimming you know just turning down the brightness it just warms the screen in a way that it doesn't hurt your eyes as much and it's more comfortable to look at the screen for your eyes you know at the nighttime while you're in the dark uh, after about a few years ago Flux started to create a they created an option for Linux too so depending on what this what Linux operating system you're on what operating system you're on you can go between the two Think Flux also has a mobile app as well I wrote about that for a blog I did for Syracuse University High School uh, info space blog about a year ago so that's that's something that you can also use so again that's Flux and Redshift and having another stress outlet having something other than the gym do some type of art you know, whether it's the music the poetry uh, spoken word rap and singing uh, have a social life hang out with family and friends that sense of community which we as humans we, we need that uh, sports and, and outdoors and something else that you can do for fun and leisure and, and in a relaxed way where the goal is primarily to have fun and to enjoy yourself meditation is another it's uh you talked about the yoga thing there are, there are different ways of uh, doing doing a lot of that stuff or doing some of that stuff at the same time teaching teaching or learning you know reading find, finding finding ways to help others volunteering stuff like that that can all help as well but going into the six things not to do again this is the the quick recap of the section for six things not to do. Well, let me recap what I just did. Uh, the six things to do uh, for recap was eat smaller meals more often, drink more water, exercise three to five times weekly, make it more fun for you, get the same optimal sleep nightly, and have more than one stress outlet. So now going into the six things not to do. So summary of the section would be track progress only by scale or comparisons make excuses for missing a workout depend on supplements alone rely on trending gear exercise too often too early and rush the progress process you, you are unique you're a unique individual so these things all of these of course are going to look differently to you uh, tracking pro progress only by scale or comparisons I'm pairing that with making excuses for missing a missing a workout. Uh, if you're looking to if you're looking to lose weight, that can look differently. If you're looking at the scale, for example, and I think women, I've seen women to be worse about this in regards to the scale. Men are more so about the comparisons, but women, a lot, a lot of women, in a way, uh, men too, but some. Be, People need to understand, we all need to understand and realize that losing weight can look like gaining muscle mass and you may not always see it because muscle mass is heavier than fat, right? I think it's about a little, a little around two pounds, twice as heavy or something. Um, I think I think it's a, probably a, a horrible comparison, but kind of taking a, a dime, the size of a dime and comparing it to a dollar coin, maybe. Maybe someone's got something better. There are pictures that show that as well. The comparison of fat to the body fat, uh, fat to muscle, that is. But losing weight can look like gaining muscle mass, which will increase your, increase your metabolism, which will indirectly help burn the fat. That is, that, that is a possibility. Sometimes you may not see that. So maybe your weight may go up about a pound or so, or it just seems to halt. But somehow, at some point, it seems as if your clothes started to fit better. And then, you know, at, after a short while, then you start seeing the weight come down a bit. Or you see that no, the, the weight's going down slowly. You are looking a lot better. Uh, a lot of guys, they worry about that. They look into the eye test, which can put you in a trap of worrying about the, the, showman, the show muscles. 
you know, the, the, the mirror muscles, yeah, your abs, your pecs, your biceps, to some degree, your lats. You can see some of that if you flex it, especially, you know, in your traps. Uh, you're not always going to see those see that, those improvements that easily in the in the mirror. I mean, you may have to do a side view. You may have to do a quick flex to see that. And you may have to ask yourself, are you working out the muscles opposite to the muscle you're looking at, which I've, I've, I've read can help what can affect your ability to gain more muscle mass so if, you know, if you're you're trying to grow your pecs, but you do nothing for your lats, there are there are studies that say that you know that can actually affect your ability to pack on more mass on your on your pecs because your body doesn't want to further misalign your body. You know, there's a misbalance of muscle, which will mess with your shoulders and your anatomy, and your pat posture, all that all that stuff goes together. With with tracking progress, the focus areas. I had someone just, uh, I think just about a month ago talking about they're trying to lose some belly fat and saying they're trying to do more ab work. And I had to tell them, you know, I said, they do this, this thing of losing weight by focusing on one thing, that, that's that, that's a myth, you know, uh, trying to think of what it's called. The, I have to remember what this is called. Spot reduction. Spot reduction myth. That's what it's called. I had, I had to, I had to make sure I put that in there. But the spot reduction myth: if you focus on doing all these crunches and planks and sit-ups, that it's going to turn your fat into muscle. That's that's not a thing. That's fat and muscle are two completely different things. They don't turn into each other. They serve two different functions. You know, muscle moves the body and the bones, and the fat is a layer for stored energy and you know way of sort of things not the best explanation but they don't they they don't go between each other and that's what she has said she said i'm working on doing these ab exercises to to burn to burn it off and i said yeah it, it can help with something especially compared to nothing you know the, i said I, I quickly went back to what i said earlier if you want to focus on losing weight uh, focus on leg workouts. Start do some squats and do some lunges, and start from there. And, and that would be a much better way. You can't you can't do but so much to focus on learning on losing losing weight from a specific area. And another thing that kind of goes into a lot of this is the body type. If you're, a, I'm not sure how much this is used often. Uh, I don't hear it talked about much from a little bit of reading that I do still. Uh, but you know, there's the ectomorph, the mesomorph, and the endomorph, and those are different body types. Uh, the type of how your your build seems to be. You know, you seem to be mostly one of those guys that one of those people. Who, no matter what you do, you seem like you just cannot pack on muscle or much fat at times. It seems like every, all your if any muscle you build, it just seems so much bigger because you, at their joints, they just seem everything just seems to be smaller and. It was kind of like the skinny guys, the rip, rip look, and the muscle, the muscle more of the guys that seem to be blocky or well bulky. They seem to have a bulky bone structure, and the inner more, uh, more those that just seem to have that more bulk, well, not bulk, but kind of a more square look to them. Making excuses, we all make them. Well, there are times at the end of the day. A lot of times, it just comes down to we didn't put the effort in, or it happens. Life happens, but you still got to know what they are, such as you know, the lack of experience. Again, you have Google, you have somebody at the gym that you could probably ask uh, about how to do something right. Many times it's trained staff there that at the very least can tell you, you know, help you understand the images on the machine and they can probably tell you what not to do right. And hopefully somebody, there's somebody that, you know, regardless how big they are, how strong they are, that doesn't mean they're doing the exercise right. But you can take that information and you can go find a YouTube video. Uh, when I was younger, I used exrx.net and bodybuilding.com to check how to do a lot of exercises right. And I haven't had horrible injuries from exercising, paying attention to those two mostly. EXRX has a lot of GIFs. GIFs? A debate for another day. Or maybe I just started one. Who knows? No. The animated images that just loop how to do the exercise right. 
bodybuilding.com has a lot of videos. I have a lot of everything up there. Worrying about lack of progress. And the plateaus, they happen. There are ways to avoid them. I'd written something about that. I wrote a blog about that a while ago too. I can paste that below. Uh, the, 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 main, the many ones, the big ones to keep in mind is switch it up sometime. Don't try to do the same workout every time you go to the gym for over a couple months, you know, over, over, a, over a month. Expecting you're going to continue to get better the entire time. Sooner or later, you're going to change up the exercise. You may have to change up the, the amount of sets or reps you're doing, the, the handle, you know, your grip on it, the stance, uh, the time of day. Sometimes pay attention to how much energy you're putting in your body before you go to the gym, stuff like that. You drink enough water. That list goes on and on. Track your progress and know that you know if you're not making progress one of the first things you should probably look at is when's the last time you changed something even if it's just the weight uh pain that's it happens find you can find ways to compensate though if you remember sometimes if you got to think on the fly if you're in the middle of a set and something feels uncomfortable you're trying to figure out is that pain is that soreness all right that feels uncomfortable in a joint what's another exercise that i can do to get a similar effect or to work the similar the same muscles or should I stop and do another exercise that works a different muscle it's something sometimes you just have to figure out and ask yourself what do you think is best based on your history and how comfortable you are with whatever it is you're feeling at the time again time <laughs> one of the things I tell I like to tell people hey, hey man if if you're saying you don't have time for the gym that's fine. I'm pretty sure you have a, a plain spot on the floor somewhere where you can at least do some push-ups, crunches, or some squats, some lunges. If if you if you really enjoy, maybe you can do some burpees. I don't. I don't enjoy burpees. Never did. You know, there's something that you can do. You can do that yoga. You can do some of those holds. There's something you can do. You can make the time. And another one is you're tired. I talked about earlier. You know, you're tired, you go to the gym, and you may not be able to get the same amount of progress in that workout, but it's still something. You're still doing something. You know, you just pay attention to your body, and if your body tells you, hey, look, you're not mentally into this, or there's a better way you could be spending this 20 to 60 minutes and just doing this workout, and you know, maybe you could do something all else together instead of hitting the weights. Maybe you, you go for a short run, maybe you do some cycling. There, there's options. You don't know your options. Um, do it quick schemes. That's this is where I, I pair the two the two ones of depend on supplements alone and rely on relying on trending gear. Supplements affect people differently. All all of them can have different side effects depending on the person. Many people try to make this blanket statement that they're bad for you. You don't need them. Okay. Well, whey protein, casein protein creatine a lot of that stuff is in food that you're having already it's, it's a, it becomes about the individual the individual and the percentage of how much you're putting in your body how much does how much creatine can you put in your body without your kidney saying hey look i don't i'm not i'm not comfortable with this level of creatine in my in in our in the system how much whey protein casein protein can you have before you just end up literally getting rid of it Without using it, your body just dumps it without you doing much with it. And what's actually doing? What do you actually need? Creatine is for for example. I remember reading the creatine. One of the reasons where or why a lot of times it's considered to simply improve athletic performance is because well, it can do different things for different people. It is a great example of that for some people it doesn't increase strength or muscle mass. It can just, it may not even add water weight somehow, maybe, but it'll increase endurance or do one of those or the other. It may not do anything but one of those, maybe make you thirsty, of course, which goes back to needing to make sure you're drinking enough water so you're not walking around cotton mouth all the time. Depending on your job and what you're doing, that may not, it may not be worth it to try that supplement or uh, try creatine. Uh, herbs, herbal supplements, and real food, the body will, all, will usually prefer. If not always, usually prefer real food over chemically extracted nutrients in, in, in a capsule or especially a tablet. 
you know, because your tablet, a tablet in your body has to break down the tablet. And you have to hope that that's done fast enough that your body can get those nutrients. Uh, versus a capsule, normally that little thin liner, that 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 uh that get that gets eaten away fast enough that whatever's inside it's already broken down. So it's easier for your body to digest and use it versus you know you're pretty much wasting your money. You're uh in a sense dumping your money, if you know what I mean. But uh, there are herbal options. Sometimes they look silly, but they may sound odd because you don't hear about it often. But they can be just as valuable, if not more. You know, instead of an energy drink. Maybe you try green tea. Um, if maybe, maybe you'll get you'll find some that doesn't have the citrus in it, or too or too much sugar for it to give it some type of flavor, preferred flavor. Uh, instead of an energy drink, you can try you know, vitamin B12. Uh, if you want energy, you can also try uh, the fix maca or maca powder. And there's different options for stuff like that. Uh, the side effects can be different for different people. Again, that depends on how much the person, uh, your history, medical, med medical history, when you're taking it, what you took it with. That list goes on and on and on. More about just being careful, paying attention to what you're doing, and paying attention to the changes. The placebo effect. Placebo effect is a real thing. Many people, many times, someone can you can buy a supplement and you may put in more work because you expect it to help you. To help you achieve those goals, that that is a thing. It's similar to people buying a gym membership, saying that that's going to motivate them to go to the gym. I know plenty of people that does not work for. I'm thinking of someone right now where once they got the gym membership, I I pretty much needed the offer to go to the gym with them at a certain point. I'm not saying that was that oh that was always the case, but at a point that was something that needed to happen. Uh, that seemed to seem to need it to happen to, to get them back into the gym uh, more often, kind of help build that confidence, um, possibly. Still got to put in the work. <laughs> Regardless of what you're doing, you're still going to need to put in the work. Uh, a lot of people, especially fitness trainers, I mean, it can be real quick to tell you, it doesn't matter which, what those supplements are you put in your body. It's not going to replace a junk diet. If, it's, if you feel as if it is as of now, there is going to be a point where it does not. There is going to be a point where it catches up to you and you're going to have to say, all right, this doesn't work for me anymore. I need to do something else or something more. Or regardless of what those supplements you're putting in your body, they're not going to replace bad form or the fact that you shouldn't be doing these exercises, which put this type of load on this joint where you're having this type of issue with your back or your shoulder, your elbows, your knee, your hip, etc. The training gear. I had a little bit of fun writing writing out these these three uh well these few uh examples. The Bosu ball and that came out it was pretty much the top eighth of a of an exercise ball and it's got a platform where you can stand on and do exercise and it's unbalanced. So you can do your push ups and it's shaking around or you can stand on top of it to do your squats, stuff like that. I'm not saying it's not helpful, by the way. But again, the, the, the key word is relying. I expected it to be the biggest change in your life that's going to make the biggest difference. Any change that it does make will likely be because it's, it's something different that you haven't done much of. It's probably saying that you should be doing more of this type of exercise, more for stability work or core work. Uh, I didn't look up the brand. But I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be hard to find. The heel training shoes was a big thing. And the uh, East Bay magazines, I think, a good couple years ago, they're pretty much shoes that had a huge platform on the heel, which was supposed to force you to stand, uh, walk on your heels and help you help your, ver your jump vertical. Uh, they was, they were targeted mostly at basketball and football players. I think they usually went alongside the uh, – that – parachute kit you put a parachute behind you you know you'll have that harnessed up to you and you try to run with that thing that you those things usually came together the minimalist shoes the, the vibram i think that was the brand the finger toe shoes whatever you call them where there was little to no support those weren't fun i'm not talking about the specific brand of shoes but the, the minimalist shoes well I, I believe they had a great a great use but when that trend trend came out I found out very quickly when I decided to buy me a pair of minimalist shoes. Again, not the Vibrance, but another brand of minimalist shoes for running. 
that wasn't a good idea for me. They didn't seem to be for the type of running I was doing. It wasn't comfortable for me, my weight, the type of running I was doing. They'd be a lot better if I bought, kept those shoes. Even now, I, I still believe if I had those shoes, they'd be great to have in the gym doing a workout where it forces my body to do more of that core work. You know, me being closer to the ground, more intimate with the, with the floor. But the running, running with those things is not for everyone. Uh, uh, the tech compression, there are types of that that can work. You know, the bench shirts are a good example. There, there's you know, it's a different type of material, certain places to make, to try to force you into the right form and in the, in the right, in the right posture, et cetera. You know, they, I think about a few years ago, there was also the compression shorts. They had the same thing where it helped you run fast, supposed to help, help you run faster, jump faster, all that good stuff. Now the support belt, <laughs> seeing someone wearing one of those weight belts while they're doing reps, doing sets of 15 deadlifts with 135. You know, you're essentially putting all of your, your ability to support yourself onto that weight belt. So once you don't have it, you know, now your body has to do more work. Last time I checked, last time I read into it, the weight belts were mostly for when you're doing heavy lifts, especially maximum lifts, you know, your lat, your five rep max and above, you know, to the one rep max. But using a weighted belt, you don't have any back issues. You know, you're doing three sets of 15 with a light weight, you know, a light weight for you, you know, it's, it can be a little counterproductive. And again, and then there's the the actual gimmicks, complete gimmicks, you know, the shake weight. The chest expander, uh, that was something I saw a good while ago. It was pretty much a, a stretchy band with a handle where you, your job is to pull it back. You're supposed to pull it back. It's the way it's advertised, which actually works the rear the rear delts and the posterior deltoids, you know, your back, the back of your shoulders, because you're pulling it back. It's not working your chest much at all. Uh, in a way, you could consider it a literal chest expander as that's what it's doing. It's... You're expanding your chest in a way where it can be help in the fact that it could be helping you improve your posture. Maybe I guess that's maybe that could be a way of looking at it. Maybe you'd be better off just doing some pull-ups and some rows and just not having crap posture. And uh, many people, I think, should remember this, the six second abs machine, where it was pretty much a machine where you put on your lap and then you just squeeze down on it. That was that was all it did. It was an interesting thing to pay for something like that. I will say one thing I didn't mention, didn't mention uh, that I think th- deserves to be mentioned was the ab wheel. That was a good using that is using that uh, that concept. You don't have to buy a wheel. You can always just get a weight plate, get two weights, you know, two uh, Olympic weight plates, and put on a barbell. And you can use that instead of you know buying two literal wheels on a handle with a nice little coated coated panning padding. But doing that. That that ad, those ad wheel exercises were pretty good. I remember doing it and then watching Rumble in the Bronx by Jackie Chan. And he was doing it from a standing position you know, at the beginning, first time, trying to get back into shape. He couldn't do it. And then after some half he got beat up and he was trying to get stronger, get back in shape. And he started doing them. And I started doing, I started seeing that. And I, I did that. That was pretty good. It's a pretty good exercise. I don't remember the last time I did it. But I do remember that being a really good exercise. Really good core exercise, but again, it's still don't rely on it because of that. That spot reduction myth. It is a myth. Embrace the journey. And this is where I pair the the two bits of exercise too often, too early, and rush the process. Allow your time. Allow time to recover. And some people they get into it and they start seeing some progress and they want to do more to try to expedite that progress. Your, your body at the point is going to need some rest. Your joints going to need some rest. Uh, soreness is a thing, especially. I think the term is called the de- delayed onset muscle soreness, where you know next day, especially if you don't get a lot of sleep the night the night of the workout, you know the next day you may feel okay, and suddenly, you no, know, the night of the next day you're you're minding your own business and you're about to go to bed and suddenly you're having this pain, or two days later you wake up and you're in you're you, you're in, you're in horrible pain. You know, and one of the things that I used to do that I like to do when I know I'm, I'm when I'm expecting a lot of soreness is I do some type of cardio after the workout because you know doing a cardio before the workout you're affecting much of what you're going to be doing inside the gym or during your weightlifting workout but vice versa you know you've already put in the heavy work into your lifts 
and the cardio afterwards, it, it can it's it's not gonna affect the workout. You already did it. Uh, of course, that depends on what sports you're improving on and working on, etc. And just something to think about. Reflecting on how to improve workouts. You know, you have a good workout, or maybe something didn't seem right at a certain point. Maybe you know, take note of that during the workout, and see if maybe there's a different exercise you could do, or a different way you could do that exercise. Uh, maybe you didn't feel comfortable doing overhead overhead barbell presses because of how you you lean back or how you you got to move the bar in front of your face. Well, try dumbbells, you know, or try a different grip, you know, maybe try seated or not because maybe you might depend on the rest, the the back rest too much. You know, just, just looking into how you can improve that something, keep yourself safe and keep yourself healthier longer. Decipher pain from soreness. Just because it feels a little uncomfortable doesn't always mean that you need to fight through it. There's, there's a difference between that lactic acid buildup and that pain where there's, a, there's that sharp pain where something's not right. Something shouldn't be happening. Maybe you heard something sound like a rip or a tear. Maybe you should stop or note that at the very least so you know what to pay attention to the next time you do that exercise. Because uh, you don't know when that could have an effect on another exercise later in that workout or in the next time you do the exercise next week. Rushing the process, again, that's, you start seeing that, start seeing that progress and you go, okay, maybe I should, you know, I should ramp it up. Maybe I should do two a day, two, two a day, three a day, work out every day, take your time. Uh, lifestyle changes are needed to, you know, for this journey, trying to be, be a better you, you know, talked about the water, drinking more water, healthier food choices, stuff like that can take time. This isn't something that you can, that you should be expecting or putting on your, telling yourself you're going to do all of them right now. You know, it takes time and it takes finding ways to make it work in your life. Some things you can try, they can work for a little while, but it just doesn't seem realistic for you to continue doing. And that's, that's part of imperfection. It's, it's trying to figure out what works for you. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes you have to succeed by failing. You know, do something, go, okay, hey, that didn't, that didn't work. It it seemed right, but that doesn't work for me because of X, Y, and Z. It's a learning process. That's where all the resources come in and talking to other professionals, people who aren't some random guy talking about what he thinks he knows about health and fitness. All right. Uh, my main resources, that's that, that was it. So recapping before I go to that, recapping the six things not to do. Track progress only by scale or comparisons. Make excuses for missing a workout. Depend on supplements alone. Rely on trending gear. Exercise too often, too early. And rush the process. Uh, for personal development, like I said, I've been reading up on the resources that I like to list. Are bodybuilding.com, exrx.net, Muscle Fitness Magazine. Those three things were my go-tos for the last 15 years. Anytime I wanted to learn more, those are the first three places I went. To try to try to learn in different ways of doing it, to read about studies and other ways of doing it. I look into trying to find some decent references to add along with the podcast, so it's not just a bunch of words, you know, regarding a lot of the things I said. But again, take take what I said, go find a professional, find a fitness trainer, like I'm gonna do once I finish, once I post this, and get someone with those uh, those acronyms of Personal certification, personal fitness certif- certifications, uh, fitness certifications, the nutritionists, ask them what they truly believe is new, new information, what's the right information, what should be common sense, what I had no business saying, what I said that's a myth or, or outdated information, get that information, that stuff is always changing and it's sometimes it's hard to find that, find what's, what's the right information as of now. Um, one new documentary I've seen is called What the Health and in that documentary they talk about the different lifestyles I think between a a vegan or I can't think of the other name I think it starts with a K but I'm not going to try and say it because I'm not coming up with the right word I know and the other words that I can think of are just take us down down a completely different rabbit hole of topics that I don't want to I don't want to even touch to risk this being seen more as x-rated etc but that those were my bits so 
Again, that's six things I'd say look into doing, six things to do, six things not to do. So final recap, six things to do, eat smaller meals more often, drink more water, exercise three to five times weekly, and I like to focus on the leg workouts. Make it fun for you, uh, regards, based on your goals. Uh, get the same optimal sleep nightly, have more than one stress outlet. Six things not to be doing. Don't track progress only by scale or comparisons. Some things you're just not gonna see that quickly. Make excuses for missing a workout, it happens. Depend on supplements alone, real food helps. It really does. Rely on trending gear. If anything, there are just other tools. Exercise too often, too early, give yourself time and rush in the process. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you take this information and you find somebody that can give you better confidence in what you've heard here and read uh, with this. And I hope this was manageable enough. I hope this was easier, easy to digest. This gave you a, a better format to create a discussion with others about this. All right. Take care and go live lively.